Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and we are going to work on some ephemera today. Some of this ephemera may end up in the uh, scrapbook that I'm working on, the altered scrapbook, and I'll show you real quick what I got done this weekend. Um, or, you know, it may end up somewhere else, but um, just some fun ephemera ideas to play with. So, you guys have seen this and this. And I did do a journal, uh, journaling card to go in this pocket over here. And this is from my cabinet card stigy, that little baby. If you're looking for some old photographs. And I just saw that this little piece is loose. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Because we don't want to tear it. Alright, I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. We did. It was very nice. Fourth of July. Um, I did this. This is Allie the Cockney Crafters papers, and this one's mine, and some uh, coffee dye, and then this is that little flip out that we did together, and then this is another little flip out that I did. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm kind of having trouble with my asthma today, so, um, you know, nothing major, just a little bit irritated, I think, from allergies, but um, anyway, so I made this yesterday, just playing around. It's just a little pocket and it's book page it's like the whole you know two pages of um, old book page that I took out of a book and I added uh, some of that vellum or transparency paper that I printed my bees on it says the honey bee there but then I also made this large journaling tag to slip in there and then you can see the lady through it so that's kind of fun and then behind it there's another little pocket to write on and then I did put just a little velcro right here which I know isn't super pretty but um, because I just didn't want it flipping open all the time and then getting bent or whatever and then this is just one of those little uh, you know sew down the middle It's because it's actually I lied it's four book pages because it's you know one book page makes the foot part and then this is another set of two book pages that I folded this part in and this part in to make the pockets there's two pockets and it's been stitched down the center but I stitched it before I added the scrapbook paper <clears throat> so um, you know your stuff can't fall like all the way through or whatever and then this is just a little pocket from a piece of um, collage page and then this is just one of those you know the book page folded over to the corner there and then I just, like I said, did just a little Velcro just so that it's not flopping open all the time because I didn't think about it until it was glued down. Otherwise, I would have maybe done a tie on it or something. But I did that page. And that one, I don't know if you guys saw. I did this one. And this is one we did together. And then this one is going to be a large pocket here. So I just took two of the scrapbook pages and glued them together at the top and the bottom and it made like a large pocket. So I will do a flip through when this is all the way done. And I may do another video with whatever I decide to do with the cover and the spine there. But yeah, I just thought that was a fun thing. And then I've been playing with um, Taylor Made Journals, her vintage paper ephemera set one. And I didn't print all of it, but some of it was in what I just showed you. Sorry, I should have said that. But it's just really cool old ledgers and like advertisements and uh, just all kinds of fun stuff that you can add some old postcards and then old like uh, French letters and things. And then I also um, got her French roast digital download and it's coffee dyed paper but she's, I think she's done a uh, techniques similar to medieval mirage and I don't know for sure because I didn't like ask her how she did these but that's kind of what it reminds me of where you put a um, I, don't know, I think it's inkjet inkjet printed page down and then um, when you coffee dye onto an you know onto another page it you get that transfer of whatever the image was but I could be wrong she could have coffee dyed some you know pages that already looked like this or whatever. I don't really know what her process was because I didn't ask her about that. But um, there's a lot more than this in that kit. And I would tell you how many pages, but my computer's down at the moment. 
so this is kind of all I could get this morning. <laughs> and um, I did print some of these yesterday, these, the ephemera set. So I will have uh, the links to those in my description box below this video. So uh, definitely check it out if you want um, these. And hopefully I'll remember to talk about it another time too, because I'm sure I'll be using it for a while. So like I said, I hope you guys had a great weekend. We did, we did. It was lovely had some friends over and just had a nice time so and it was insane here with the fireworks oh my goodness like it's always bad but it was like next level <laughs> it was it was crazy so what I've done is taken a piece of Tim Holtz paper you know at the back of his um, paper pads a lot of the time there's these you know the little they're sometimes squares or these rectangles with the whole page printout on it and so I just cut out two that were already connected and folded it and have to make like a little book and so um, these are a couple of uh, tailor-made journals the ephemera set the vintage paper ephemera set one and like one's a postcard and one's uh, manager's package certificate just very cool looking so I thought I'd put those in as pages and then maybe we can put a couple pieces of this really old book page so I wanted to see the measurement on this and it's three by three by four so we want um six by four piece and I just I'm using this because um, I don't know about you guys but when you use your cutter that slides it just doesn't work on book page and maybe it's just me but <laughs> I always just tear it all up and the problem with this is it doesn't have a um, let me see how wide is it this way oops oh it's over six so I could just go to four and then do six the other direction it doesn't, this one is um, Creative Memories. I've had it forever and ever. But you know, you can only measure it to, to there, so. But yeah, the, my Fiskars just rips the paper, which is really annoying, so. I think what I'll do, just kind of fold it where I need it. at three maybe that might be the I'm sure there's a better way you guys are probably like screaming at me like you are the biggest dope on earth yes I am just put it at three there and then cut it and that's this corner is a little dinged on this page. This is just old book page, like I said, so. And I guess we don't want it quite exact, do we? Because that doesn't work very great. So let's do three and three quarters. And then two and three quarters. Okay, so then you get a nice old book page piece of paper to write on. And are those, these are under there. And I could probably get another one out of this. I'm very excited because I thought I was going to only get a couple of pages. So three and three quarters. But yeah, so anyway, this more of a guillotine style or whatever you want to call it um, will definitely work a little bit better for this project of using old book page. So we want to fold it to two and three quarters. Roughly about there. Can probably do one more out. Nope, that's not enough. We'll do another one out of this. And I'll save these because I like to use these when I'm doing um, clusters and things like that. They're very good for that. Put 
the only problem I have with this cutter is that um, sometimes if you don't have that arm lifted entirely, it doesn't cut straight, which, you know, is my own fault. But I forget and it looks like it's up and, you know, it's just one of those things. And plus the size of it is not very conducive to most projects. Because it's little, but it was meant for cutting pictures, you know, when you were scrapbooking. So it's just an entirely different uh, thing now <laughs> that we do. So that makes it not perfect for using all the time. All right, so I'll save that piece and get rid of the little itty bitty strip. So there's that three, four, five, maybe one more page. We'll do. So we've got six pages. Let's do a piece of this coffee dyed. I'll just use my regular cutter for that. So yeah, I'm going to do some book page stuff too. So um, hopefully there'll be something newer and more interesting than me just sitting here cutting this paper. This one I can go to five and three quarters. I don't want to cut the tea bag. Five and three quarters. There's a, you can see the tea bag right there. <laughs> I mean, you probably won't be able to tell what in the world it is once it's in there, but it's fine. Just adds a little bit of interest there. All right, so are those, no, somehow I cut that way shorter. Oh, well, it'll be, it's a short one. I don't know what I did. I obviously majored wrong, so I'm just going to take a little bit off of this edge, because somehow I oopsed, which surprise. And I'm using my gray mat again because the light with the other one is just so difficult, and I really want to use it, and I keep trying, and I don't know why I keep trying, because it really isn't great for um, videoing, it just the color is just so dark on it. But I love it. I think I'm going to ink around these. They're really white on the inside too, but I'll do a little bit of ink since they're not very big pages. So this is just going to be a booklet, you know, that you can put in a pocket or, you know, carry in a purse, that kind of thing. It's not a big journal, obviously. But um, I'm going to be doing one of my hinged journals as well coming up um, as a viewer request, so I'm definitely going to do that. I have not forgotten. I'm just just had some projects I needed to finish up. And then, yeah, so this can sort of go along the lines of that, just simple little journals that if you're just starting out um, journal making, these might be good you know, good things to play with and start because they're tiny and you won't feel overwhelmed or like you're going to ruin a whole bunch of paper or something like that. So, um, doing these little ones at first is kind of a good, and it just kind of gives you a feel. And you can put pockets in them and everything. Um, that's what I do with the whole the hinge journals. And if you um, haven't been watching my channel for very long, if you go check out around Christmas time, I did a few videos on hinged journals, and I got the idea from Rachel at Roxy Creation, so it's not my idea, it's her idea. But, um, and I, she may have gotten it somewhere too, but anyways, uh, they're just, then you don't have to worry about sewing and signatures or doing any of that stuff, and um, they make great gifts. I had uh, lots of people that wanted them around Christmas time, because you can put them in a stocking or something like that. They're just kind of fun. Fun little journals. And kind of good for around Christmas if you just like to keep like a Christmas journal or something. But you don't need a gigantic one. And these two. So white and center. Okay, so this um, gives you an idea, like I said, if you're just starting out. You're just stacking pages, and some can be bigger, smaller, that whole thing, however you want to do it. And I might have to cut these a little bit smaller. I thought I had them a good size, but it looks like they might be a little bit big, so we'll just cut them the same size as the other ones. As far as width, they're, this one's shorter than the one before it, that kind of thing, but I try to keep the width pretty much the same with all my pages. 
just so it's not, you know, really weird and awkward when you're flipping through it. <clears throat> I think I was doing those like the size of the book when it's the whole outside part. That doesn't make any sense, but anyway. Okay. So this one can go right here again. I like something interesting on that first page. And I have this, and then maybe we'll put this one here. And these, where could I put? Let's do this one so that we kind of have a, you know, a staggering of smattering of pages, so to speak, throughout. And it's not going to be thick because I want it to go into a pocket. So I don't want to make anything that's going to be like, you know, too massive. It's just a fun little mini. And then I have my um, book cradle here. And this is the kind of thing that this is for. I mean, it's for any signature. You can do any book signature in these journals because they are in these cradles because they have the little divot right there um, that your all gets to poke into when you poke through the signature. That way your um, holes are all straight and they won't end up like sideways coming out the side over here or over here. I've had that happen when I've just used a book. It'll come out like a little bit over from the actual spine and you kind of want them like right on the spine because that's the, you know, that looks the best. And this one's probably going to just fall kind of right into the, the ditch, but I'm just more showing you how it works than, you know, this isn't very much paper, so it's probably going to fall right into the ditch, but you'll still be able to get the, um, the pages how you want on that kind of thing. It's still going to help direct you with the getting them a little bit more centered. Is that the right? Yeah. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I mean, you know, if you're doing a, a journal with like three signatures, you're going to be doing measuring and making sure you're getting them all in the right spots and that type of thing. But we're just doing a, a quickie little fun booklet here. So I'm just taking my all and you can see I'm kind of in the center there of my signature pages. And, you know, regularly you'd have big, a big signature. And we're just going to go straight down. And you can hear it thunk, hit the bottom of the cradle. And then we're going to come, and it's just a little bit up from the bottom, and go straight down. And then one here. And normally, like I said, I would have measured everything, and these would... I usually do an inch from the top and the bottom of the book and then, you know, one in the center is how I measure it normally. But since we're just kind of doing this little book, we don't have to get all super fancy. I'm just going to take a needle. And this is embroidery, or not embroidery, I say that every time. It's um, upholstery thread. <laughs> And so it's stronger than, you know, regular thread. And so we want three lengths of the journal. One, two, three. And that was a little more, but it's fine. You just, three lengths roughly, just so that you have plenty to sew. And normally I'd have that all clipped and everything too, but because it's just a little one, I'm not doing that. And everybody has sort of a different system the way they do this, but I'm going to go in through the center hole. And you can see that my, hopefully you can see, see how they're right on the spine there, the holes, instead of being maybe a little off this side or a little off that side, which can be very aggravating when you're, you know, making and selling journals. Because obviously you want them to look nice and not have the holes coming out the wrong spots and all that. So, um, yeah. And then I go in through either the top or the bottom. It really doesn't matter. Again. And then go all the way to the other hole, whichever, whether it be the top or the bottom, and out. And then I come, ah, well, it helps if you, what did I do? Oh, I lost my thread. <laughs> ah, you know, I every time I sew in signatures, no matter how many times I do it, there's always some 
there always has to be some little something go wrong. All right, so all the way to the top with your thread hopefully attached. <laughs> and then you're going to come back in through the that center signature hole again. So I got them on, out of the line up here. See, so it's coming right back up. And then you want one of these uh, thread pieces on each side of that middle line. So see that middle line right there? If, it probably would have been better to do this on a different color paper, but can you see I've got one on this side of the middle line and one side, one on this side of the middle line of the thread. And then you're just going to knot it two or three times, so that's your choice. And I tend to lift mine while I'm doing it and hold it up because then I just know I'm going to get that nice taut string. Like I won't have um, a little spot where it's not tight and then you know you end up with wobbly signatures which you definitely don't want. You want them to be nice and tight. So by picking it up I'm taking the slack away. You don't want any slack. And then I'm just going to cut those off. And you can leave them dangle, you can tie them in a bow, you can do, you know, put charms on them, you can do all kinds of stuff like that. But because this is going in a pocket, we're just going to have it like that. So there's our little booklet. And that was a fun little fun little one to make. And um, I have a new color of the um, book cradle in my shop if you're interested. And then I've got more of the olive green. I've got a blue one, a red one. Yeah, so there's a few colors in there if you're interested in those. All right, so there's our little booklet. So that's one little piece of ephemera down. And then I thought it would be fun. I saw Gail. I was watching um, Summerhold ephemera videos because I need to make ephemera and I am just needed some ideas, you know, how you forget about things sometimes. So I'm going to make a couple of these because they looked fun. But she took fabric and put it on index cards and I thought that was neat it just it looked really cool so I think I'm gonna try to fray this a little bit more and this is just tea dyed uh, cotton type fabric it's from an old um, table napkin I think it was or something like that it might have been a hanky I don't know it's a little bit thinner than maybe a napkin but anyway whatever you have I just sprayed it with some I do kind of a tea and coffee mixture. It doesn't have hardly any uh, coffee in it. It's mostly tea. But all right, I like it with the frayed edges hanging off. That's kind of the way she had it, and that's what sort of adds to it, I think. And you can turn these into pockets or journaling cards. So thank you, Gail. This is a fun idea. I haven't made one of these. Instead of always trying to reinvent the wheel, right? Sometimes it's just nice to go get an awesome idea from a wonderful lady. And we're going to just do the top the same. So yeah, these would be great pockets or journaling cards. And if you have index cards and you're like, what am I going to do with them? Especially if you don't want to dye them or something, this is a good idea because um, you could use like an already colored cotton or printed cotton or whatever. You don't have to uh, tea or coffee dye if you don't like to do that. And I'm just going to use this because I'll probably end up stitching around it. So I'm not worried about the fabric. And this glue, I really don't have any troubles with at all. And it's Scotch Create. It's the one that's in my description box below the video. Pretty much every time, unless I just space it and forget, which does happen. Because I am good at spacing it. Yeah, the fireworks on the 4th of July here were insane. I, I mean, it's always crazy here because they're legal so like well it's not legal to do the mortar ones but um anyway people still do them but uh it was just <laughs> my gosh 
completely insane here. <laughs> like 10 times the normal. Okay, so I've just got that, and see, I like how it's got the fringy edges. So that's fun. And then you can still write on here, and we might go ahead and ink this up a little bit. If you, if I don't make it a pocket, I may make it a pocket, but if you're not going to make it a pocket, you can just kind of ink. And this is just a blush brush from the dollar store, so it's nothing fancy. And they make nice little cards to write on or pockets. Okay, and let's do, what should we put on there? I think I wanted to stamp it a little. I liked that idea. That's what Gail was doing. It just looked cool. So I'll try it and see what I come up with. I'm using some different stuff. I've got Tim Holtz, or Stamper's Anonymous uh, ticket booth tickets. And I'm just going to kind of do some of those, the numbers mostly here and there. And I have black archival ink. And I don't want it to be perfect. I keep wanting to make that flat. There's like a, the way the staining is, it looks like there's a bubble, but there's not. <laughs> so I keep trying to fix it. It's like, um, you can't fix it because it's, it is already flat. <laughs> put something under here before I get ink all over my mat. And a lot of this is probably going to get covered up, but it's fine. That's, you know, how you do the layering thing. You just kind of get it all on there. Okay, that'll be good because, you know, probably have stuff on there, so I'll clean those off later. Okay. I thought it might be fun to use this stamped have this stamped fabric that I did a while back. I don't know exactly how I want to do this yet because I hadn't really, you know, thought it all the way through. This is Tim Holtz fabric. I'm going to use the pinking shears. that or I have this other stamped piece kind of like that on there maybe it's got the same color on a different kind of fabric than that coffee dye. This is the color of this fabric. Just kind of cutting it out, so to speak, you know. And that's a stamp I got from Stampin' Up! And I think it was in one of their paper pumpkins, so it's not one that you, is readily just, you know, you can go buy that stamp. one a little better. I kind of feel like it needs a little color back there somewhere. Sorry, I'm just looking at um, some scraps here to see if anything jumps out at me. I don't know how that, that 
waste and all kinds of junk in here that isn't supposed to be in here. It obviously just got shoved somewhere. Oh, a little piece of denim. That'd be kind of cool. Cut this to make it, you know, the right length. Come on over here a little. I like the little phrase. yelling at my son. <laughs> He's downstairs. <laughs> like she does, that's what she does. And then I wonder if I want to use one of these pictures. I like these. I've been playing with these quite a bit with this. Oh, look at this little boy. See, he'd be adorable there. She's just yelling at you, Theron. Why is she yelling at you? She was yelling at me before I picked her up. <laughs> She's just yelling. Jules. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. We'll do some stitching on that. And then I'll show you what it looks like stitched. But let's rough it up a little. You're going to have all the cats in YouTube land looking for you, Jules. <laughs> She's like, oh, we don't want any other cats here. No. She really does not like any other cats here. She doesn't even like the other cat we own. <laughs> she wants to be the, the star of the show. Yeah, she'll just, if there's a cat in our yard, she'll just full on attack mode. She does not want any of that happening. Yeah, I think that's how it's going to end up. And I will do some stitching, but let's get it tacked down at least so it stays. And it probably will end up being a pocket, most likely. So I'm not, because if you're. Um, going to use it as a journaling card you might want to limit your stitching um, but since I'm going to use it as a pocket I can stitch down on these and you know it'll it'll look fine and it'll be fine for the back because you won't have to worry about writing around a bunch of stitching A little tacky glue on him because I probably won't stitch a bunch on the picture part. I might go around it, I don't know. But we'll put tacky glue just so we know it's gonna stay there. And I'm gonna tuck it a little under this one. I liked that. Alright, so what did I do with my other? Oh, lid for my glue. Alright, so there's another one done. So I got these two and I'll stitch this and show you guys what it looks like before we're done completely today. Alright, the next thing I wanted to do was one of these. This is a large old book page. As you can see, it's... But you can make these any size. So, um... You know, it's not a big deal. This is just the book I had. It's a big um, book about Board of Education, and I don't even know, for Los Angeles or something. It's a little over six and a half by, like, police detectives and just all kinds of stuff by ten, six and a half by ten. So um, I just fold it in half and then fold it in half again, and you can decide which way is up because it doesn't really matter. But 
uh, essentially what we're doing is making like a little booklet that we can unfold and journal in all the different spots. And I've made these before and some of you may have seen them. Um, this isn't my idea. It was Diane H, I believe, is where I got the idea. But I've made them quite a few times. And I, I want all of the page ripped. And then you'll see this is splitting right here because it's really old. I want to leave this because it's got the color. So I probably will be reinforcing this and maybe the bottom as well. So um, think about that when you're doing old book page, you may have to do some reinforcing. But, you know, sometimes that makes it look cool. So just a little inking on there. And then I'll probably use some pieces that we took off of some of the other things we were making. <laughs> Jules. <laughs> She's just going to yell at you, Lauren. Great. She's so happy to see you. I'm just basically making like almost like a hinge except it's not going to hook to anything else. It's just going to help hold our page together so we don't have it, you know, just fall apart. That would be a, that would not be good. And you can use scrapbook paper for this too. So don't think that you can only use like old book pages. If you don't have old book pages, you don't have to use old book pages. Or you can use new book pages and ink them or whatever. If you like the newer look, then just go with that. But you can use any paper. You could do it with copy paper. So, yeah. I just have to ding my glue at some point. And this will make it a little harder to fold, but in the end it will be worth it because you won't just have it falling apart on you. I kind of want one that is a little bit. Longer and not. And a lot of it will get covered up, this too. I mean, you'll see a little bit of it. but um, And this will probably crack too. But, you know, because you've got two layers and then the glue, I don't think the book will fall apart once this is done. I mean, I suppose give it long enough it will, but... it again just like we did the first time and this one seems to be doing fine and I think it's because it gets the protection protection of the outer one so I think that one will be fine All right so that just strengthens strengthens that up I cannot talk today it's a disaster all right um Let's use maybe some of Taylor made journal stuff here. Medical College Lottery. Oh, I kind of like these because they've got these um, stamps. They would look neat. So let me take a piece off of that. So yeah, you could make these, you know, different things that we've done today in numerous, numerous ways and, you know, have some really cool pieces, so. To put in pockets or make as pockets. Okay, and then maybe some of Gail Agustinelli's trim. 
This is um, her, one of her small world trims. And when you go on her page, which I'll link, you know, you'll see this particular trim or other ones. She's got lots of them and they're all great. Another fun thing to do is um, like tear whole, like a whole section of it and use it too. That's that works really well as like its own you know piece of paper or whatever. That I just want a piece right now. Is that going to be wide enough? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. So basically you're just going to collage all over this little book page, you know, flip thing. And they're super easy. You could like make up a whole bunch of mass making or whatever, which is what I need to start doing more of. I'm horrible about doing that and then it takes me twice as long to make a journal because, you know, i got to make every single piece individually. And don't worry about if your script um, on your book page is going upside down or whatever. It doesn't really matter because you're going to end up covering a whole bunch of it anyway. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, that, I love that old ephemera like that. It's just so fun. And then these trims look great too. And even just the old book page at the top and bottom. That looks neat. All right, maybe we can find a flower or something to use. I keep forgetting to link these, but they're in Love Arts shop. I kind of feel like it needs to be pink because of this, or you know, the blue or something. Yeah, that one's kind of cool. That would work. I have a pink rose. I think I like the iris. So let's do that. So yeah, you're just going to put papers all over it and I'll, you know, continue to do it. But um, some plain ones so that you can write on those spots where there's no design or not much design anyway. Oh, I want to tell you guys, I'm now also on library.com, but it's L-B-R-Y, and I'll put a link in my description box. And it's the same videos that I post on here, it's just another platform, you know. So, you know, you can just watch them here, or if you feel like watching them over there, you can. And I think they give, like, points, which it's all cryptocurrency, so, but you can, um, turn it into money, obviously, paper money, whatever. And uh, yeah, so it's just another platform for me to be on. Kind of fun. And it's, I mean, it's not necessarily new, but um, there aren't a ton of people on there yet. But I think in time that it will pick up. And it's not as regulated, like basically you can post anything that's legal. I mean, you can't obviously do illegal stuff, but um, anything that's legal, legal, so you can say whatever you want or whatever. It's, yeah, so it's just kind of a nice, I just worry about the whole kid thing and all that. If they decide your videos for kids or whatever, so it's nice to have another area. Okay, so this is another piece of Taylor Made Journals paper ephemera. And so see, I can put this here like that and you get a little bit of space to write on. And I'll do some with like coffee dyed paper too. So there'll be even more spots to write on. It's a little crooked. And it matters because this isn't a very big space. But yeah, if you get a chance, check out library there. Kind of a 
a good thing. Pretty good guidelines. You can do whatever you want as long as it's legal. <laughs> I don't know, there might be some wild videos on there, but I only do the art kind of stuff, so I don't really know, but... You can also give um, people their tips if you know if you like to. So it's a little bit like Patreon. It's just you don't you don't have to pay and you don't have to like um, pay every month or whatever. So anyway, that's kind of nice. this because you could definitely write on that but it's interesting looking still this part right here is a good spot so you could decorate them up as much as you want you know you could put all kinds of you know neat stuff or you could do them with just coffee dyed paper and they would be really cool as well so this is um, Taylor Made Journal's French Roast. And I don't mind seeing, you know, the, some of the word, part of the words and stuff in there. That's kind of the, the point of using old book, book page. And you could do like collage of different um, papers too, like a little coffee dyed, a little something like this, you know, whatever. So that's another good use of a book page. You can't obviously use your glue pages. Well, I guess you could, you know, if you let them dry flat like that and then you could fold them up like this and you're going to end up covering a lot of it so you probably could go ahead and do the glue pages that way um, but I just use ones that haven't been glued and this opens like this and then you can have all this space to write on as well so these are super fun um, Diane H when I watched her do it the first time it was around Christmas or something I think and um, she was making them kind of like Christmas cards or Christmas gifts or, you know, that type of thing. Um, or you could even make them into ornaments for the tree if you wanted to, that type of thing. Um, or I, I know what she was doing. She was putting them on packages. That's what it was. It's hard to remember when it's been a while. <gasps> but, uh, yeah, she was putting them on packages, like two from type things. And they were super cute. And I was like, oh, man, you could totally use those in journals. So... I've made them quite a few times here and there. This page is getting sticky. And I'm running out of glue. Ah, just messed up that. That's the only thing with the old book page, man. It's so easy to ding it. Okay, I kind of want to get what's right side up here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so you're going to open it like that. <laughs> that was one of those brain moments. And then I'm going to take another trim of Gales.
So yeah, these are fun. You can make them up pretty quick. You need to just make a whole slew of them. gonna do a little bit more of a odd tear over here. I mean, not a lot, but Okay, I'm just gonna kind of do the edges because they're white. something kind of like that. Um, I don't really want it on the same side. i do it like this. Just put it under here. This is the best part right here. Don't need a ton. Yeah, so I think, um, if I understand it, I, you know, I just started with the library thing, so hopefully I'll be able to figure it all out soon, but, um, you can earn cryptocurrency by watching videos, subscribing to videos, that whole thing, so, um, and then, like I said, you can convert it into money, regular money, so, yeah, it might be kind of a cool thing, even if you're just watching videos. To check out. I mean, there's a lot more content here on YouTube for sure, but like anything, I would assume the more support it gets, the more people will put videos on there. Alright, I'm going to fold this and get a new one. some jars. of it. Let's 
is a piece of the French roast paper again. And it didn't get torn at the top, but we'll just, we'll just do that and I'll wrap it up. figure out how I want this. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to do a little bit of a... Yeah. Just so you got a little more writing space. But a little bit of interest as well with that cool looking mason jar there. So yeah, those those ephemera pieces from Taylor Made Journals you could use as whole ephemera pieces, like you know, put them in a pocket or whatever. But um, they're really fun for collaging and stuff like that. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. Did you guys just watch me do that and went, "You're such a ding dong." Yes, I am. <laughs> I agree. an easy fix at least. So then I killed the glue on it obviously. Is this one? No, that one's good. Alright, and then another one. I've got two coffee tea dye. Oh, this one would work good because it's a uh, ledger. Ice cream wholesale, that's what I'm talking about. This one you could actually just do a little bit of it because all that bottom part is that old book page. Goodness, it's already been an hour. Holy smokes, that went fast. Okay, and this back one, you want to put kind of a plain piece there too. So let's just go ahead and go use just some lined paper there. And then I'll go stitch around those things and come back and show you guys what they look like. And then I will set you free because I am out of time, almost out of book page, and <laughs> out of glue just about to, so it's time to go. But yeah, you definitely get the idea. At least you got a few ideas and you can run with those and decorate them up however you like to. using whatever you got. And then the Tim Holtz little booklet is another good one because I know those um, end pages there sometimes are a struggle because they're not very big. You know, you can't cover a whole lot with that. It's just right side up is what I'm trying to figure out. It throws me off when the book page is upside down. All right. So there is that, and is it stuck now because of, yeah. 
So those are fun. Just stick it in a pocket. And that's actually quite a bit of journaling space there. Let me put a little more glue right here. Just have to miss corners. Alright, I will stitch around that uh, this one. This is the only one I really need to stitch. And then I'll be right back. Alright, so this is this one all stitched. Oh, I didn't stitch around it. I am a ding a -ling. Well, I'll do that. That's not that exciting. We're just going to run a stitch around there. But I did three stitches here. And if you had a fancy sewing machine, you could do, you know, really cool stitches. I just have uh, basic stitches. So that's what I did. And then I stitched around the picture because I'm going to use it as a pocket. So I'm not worried about, you know, what's on the back. All right, and then on this, I just added a sticker here, or not a sticker, it's uh, one of Tracy Fox's um, random numbers labels, and I squished it all up, and then I also added one of her older labels, her entomology, I believe, entomology embellishments set two, and I have it printed on uh, sticker paper, so I just stuck that on there, just for a little something extra, but I didn't do anything else to the inside, that's still all the same. And then our little book that we made in the beginning, I added um, a piece of lace and one of the Tim Holtz uh, paper dolls there. So that is that, and that can go in a pocket. So we got the whole three things done, <laughs> which seems to be my pretty much my number. Three things is about all I can do in an hour. So anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day, and if you like my videos, please like and subscribe, and we'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.